Here's the story of a Jewish lady who was told she'd have to try out to be queen. The king's first wife had to go, but she had chutzpah. It was a royal scene. Here's the story of a Jew in exile who was helping keep his people safe and sound. Got his knees up on the throne and built his credit. But he would not bow down And then one day a great villain drew some lots out And the fate of all the Jews lay in a crunch But that queen revealed her true self just in time That's the way we all became the foreign bunch The foreign bunch In Shusha The foreign bunch In Persia That's the way There you are. I had a little bit, you know, uh, coming from the 70s to the, to the, what is this, 2021? I got, I got really confused. I'm so sorry. Now, look, I'm trying to make a shopping list here. Uh, let's see. We need milk, eggs for huevos rancheros, spaghetti, some nice steaks in case anyone gets a good shiner, pork chop, apple shash. Oh, no, those aren't kosher. All right, just the applesauce. And maybe we'll make some latkes with those. Uh, cookies, cookies, cookies. Gosh, Mrs. Brady, those kids eat enough to feed an army. Oh, Alice, with six kids, we've got an army. I'll ask Sam to package up some nice schnitzel and schmaltz for us. I tried Instacart, but there's just no substitute for in person service. Oh, Alice, you just want an excuse to go visit Sam. Well, I suppose it's all right, as long as you take care to stay six feet apart and socially distanced. Well, that's the problem, Mrs. Brady. I've been trying to get Sam to be socially undistant for years. <laughs> Bobby, you're taking up all the space in front of the television. It's not my fault. You're the one with your pigtails in my face. I can't help my pigtails. They're part of my unique style as a lady. You're not a lady. I am so a lady. And if you say I'm not, I'll bop you. Oh, no, no. You can't stop that. What do your folks say? He started it. You always say I started it. <laughs> Hold it. You two sit on opposite sides of the plaid couch that happens to be the same exact fabric as Jan's pants. I'm going to get your mother. Greg! Hey, Greg! Hey, Greg, come on, get out of the bathroom! Greg! I just got in here. I've got a big date and I have to get ready. How can you have a big date? No one's gone anywhere this year. Well, Rachel and I, or maybe Jennifer or Debbie, I don't know which one. Anyway, we're going internet surfing. It won't be exactly like riding the waves in Hawaii, but it'll have to do. Yeah, but there are six of us for one bathroom. Think of someone else for a change. <laughs> hey, don't laugh at me. 
Yeah. How would you like it if we laughed at you, Bobby? It's okay, Peter. I always get teased with my lisp. And when I do my presentations for online school, people don't even mute themselves while they're giggling, but <laughs> you sure do sound funny, Peter. Come on, guys, give me a break. <laughs> oh, no. There it goes again. Oh my God. Yeah, that's funny. Stop it. Yeah. Now, kids. What's gotten into you all? You know that we can't all talk the same time in these boxes. What have your father and I taught you? Honey, I'm home. Oh, Mike, I'm so glad you're here. It seems we have a little problem. Really? What's the little problem? Were you playing ball in the house? scaring each other on a camping trip, putting itching powder in those sleeping bags again. You kids, you go and tell your dad, but wait just a second. Where are Marsha and Jan? Oh, they can't be in this scene. Why not? Um, something must have suddenly come up. Well, we'll just have to start without them. Go on, Bobby, Cindy, tell your father what's just happened. We're sorry, Dad. We were just poking fun at Peter. His voice is doing Meshuggah things. We're sorry, Daddy. Well, I'm proud of you both for telling the truth. It's a little too rare these days but I'll bet there's an even bigger lesson we can learn here. How about you kids gather around? Your mother and I will tell you a very, very important story. That's right. It takes place about 2,500 years ago in a faraway land called Persia. Bobby, maybe you learned this story at Westdale. Could you start us off? Sure thing, Mom. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kiddishanu B'mitzvotav V'tivanu Al Mikra Megila Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Sh'asa Nisim L'avotainu B'yamim Ha'em B'zman Hazeh Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechayanu Vekiyamanu Vehigiyanu Lazman Hazeh Amen Vayahi Vimei Achashverosh Hu Achashverosh Hamelech Mehodu Ad Kush Shava Vesarim Umeya Medina Ayamim Ahem Shavet Amelech Achashverosh Al Kisei Malkuto Ashebu Shashan Avira Vishnat Shalash Lamalcho Asamishtev Chol Sara Viyavadav Chel Paras Tumadai Apartamim Bazarei hamedina hot levanav baharato et o shekavad malchutov yet yakati peret kedulato yamim rabim shmanim umeat yom. And then in the fullness of time, the king made a huge feast of seven days for everyone who lived in. Shushan, the capital, great and small alike, in the courtyard of the garden of the king's palace, there were hangings and decorations and cords and fabrics, linen and purple, silver and marble and gold. And even the drinks were served in golden vessels, vessels of diverse form and royal wine in abundance in accordance with all the wealth of Hamelech the king. And the drinking was according to the law. There was no coercion. 
that the king had established for every officer of his house to do according to each man's pleasure. Find Val to unmute her. Chapter two of the Megillah. No, but no, 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 no. Uh, we're in the middle of chapter one. But oh, that ex section. that explains it. Bobby, wait your turn. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sorry. <laughs> All right, I can't find Val because we have so many people here to unmute. I will find Val. In addition, Queen Vashti gave a banquet for women in the royal palace of King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the king was merry with wine, he ordered Mehuman, Bizetha, Harbona, Bigta, Abakta, Zethar, and Carcas, the seven eunuchs in attendance on King Ahasuerus, to bring Queen Vashti before the king wearing a royal diadem to display her beauty to the peoples and the officials, for she was a beautiful woman. But Queen Vashti refused to come at the king's command conveyed by the eunuchs. The king was greatly incensed and his fury burned within him. Then the king consulted the sages, learned in procedure, for it was the royal practice to turn to all who were versed in law and precedent. His closest advisors were Karshena, Shetar, Admatha, Tarshish, Berez, Marsena, and Memukan, the seven ministers of Persia and Media, who had access to the royal presence and occupied the first place in the kingdom. What, he asked, shall be done according to law to Queen Vashti for failing to obey the command of King Ahasuerus conveyed by the eunuchs? Thereupon, Memu Khan declared in the presence of the king and the ministers, Queen Vashti has committed an offence not only against your majesty, but also against all the officials and against all the peoples in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus. For the queen's behavior will make all wives despise their husbands as they reflect that King Ahasuerus himself ordered Queen Vashti to be brought before him, but she would not come. No, she wouldn't. And this day, I am Hazetamana. Then all the princesses of Persia and Medea, they will hear about the queen and speak of it, and there will be much contempt and rage. So therefore, if it please the king, let there go forth a royal edict from him, and let it be written in the laws of Persia and Media, all of the media, that it be never revoked, that Vashti never again appear before King Ahasuerus and his kingdom will confer her royal estate upon another Hatava Mimena, who is better than her. And then this was heard and proclaimed by Pitgam, the one who will be on over and have authority on all of the domains of the king. And it will be a command, great, that all wives will show respect to all husbands, great and small alike, this proposal was favorable in the eyes of the king and the officials, all men. And the king did according to the words of Mumukan and sent letters to all the provinces, to each province in its own script and language to the effect that every man should rule. And speak the language of his own people. Let's invite Rabbi Elisheva. Excellent. Well, you know, I, I know that many of you wonder what happened to Vashti. And um, yes, it does say that she was perhaps um, done away with. But there is also an ancient Persian legend that she went off and founded a home for orphan girls. And in particular, they made the money to educate those girls by creating pastries. And so today I thought I would share with you um, some of the sorts of pastries that, that Vashti's girls would make. 
Um, obviously, you know about this one, right? And um, this is a, a standard Heyman's pocket pastry and um, filled with a, a Sephardic mixture, by the way, of cardamom, orange, and chestnuts. And if anybody wants the recipe, we can get that to you. Um, however, they also specialized in making coronavirus-shaped hamantaschen. Um, at the beginning of any pandemic, it was very important to make sure that there were almost out of toilet paper shaped hamantaschen. And, and especially on Purim, we worked very hard to make sure that there were mask shaped hamantaschen. I'm afraid that, that uh, the girls were unaware of the mirroring aspect of Zoom when they made the Zoom containing hamantaschen. And they were almost entirely put out of business by the vaccine that removed any dangers from the community. And thus they began making syringe shaped hamantaschen that saved the people. So I hope you enjoy your special treats for this holiday. Matea Vaughn, we will set up chapter two. Achar hadvarim ha'ele kashocham hat ha'melech ha'chashverosh zachar et vashti ve'et asher asata ve'et asher nigzhar aleha Vayomeru nare ha'melech mesharetav, yivakshu la'melech, narot betulot vot mare. Vayavken ha'melech pekidim, mechol medinot malchuto, vayikabtsu et kol nara betula, tovat mare el shushan habira el beit hanashim, Alyan heges ris ha melech shumer hanashim, naton tamrukehem vehana ara, ashetita bende ha melech timloch tahat vashti, vaita vadavar bende ha melech vaya askein. Did you hear that? There's going to be a parade, a contest, a beauty contest, a parade of costumes. And, and we, we can be a part of that parade. So I'm going to keep reading the story. And you, you can be a part of the parade, OK? OK. So after the, that happened, there was a Jewish man in Shushan, and his name was Mordechai, and he brought up Hadassah, that is, Esther, his uncle, daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. She was very beautiful. So it came to pass at the king's command that Esther was brought also to the king's palace. Esther had revealed neither her people nor her religion, for Mordechai had instructed her not to tell. Now, the king loved Esther above all the other women, to, so, so he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then king, the king made a great banquet and called it Esther the feast. One day, while Mordechai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's eunuchs, who guarded the door, thought to do away with King Ahasuerus. Mordechai heard them and told it to Esther the queen, and Esther informed the king of it in Mordechai's name. They were both punished for threatening the king's life, and it was written in the book of the Chronicles in the presence of the king. That is the end of chapter two. But before we go on to chapter three, 
I would love to teach you a few things that might make it more fun. These are things that you can do when you hear the word Heyman. So if you have a grogger, that's one thing you can do. You can also boo in the chat. Don't get anything rated anything but G because I know we have kids here like me. Um, so you can boo in the chat. You can also do reactions. So look down at the bottom of your screen. You can see a little button and you can make it go like that when you hear Esther, for example. Um, and let's see, what else can I tell you? Oh, you can change the way you look. If you forgot your costume, you can put on a costume by choosing the video filter down by your video camera icon. And I think that's basically all you need to go and have a great time. So if you hear the word Heyman, make as much noise. And I'm seeing here a tip. If you use caps, the boo is louder. Okay, so I think everybody, oh, you also, you might have fun. Sometimes, especially when the reading is going on, you might have fun on gallery view. Um, but make sure when you're watching the feel that it gets back to speaker view. Okay, with that, I think we are ready for chapter three. אחר הדברים האלה גידל המלך אחשוורוש את המן בן המדתא הגגים וינשאו וישם את כיסו מעל כל השרים אשר איתו וכל עבדי המלך אשר בשער המלך קוראים ומשתחווים להמן כי חן סיבה לו המלך ומרדכי לא יכרע ולא ישתחווה ויאמרו עבדי המלך אשר בשער המלך למרדכי מדוע אתה עובר את מצוות המלך ויהי כי אמרם אליו יום ויום ולא שמע עליהם ויגידו להמן לראות הימדו דברי מרדכי כי הגיד להם אשר הוא יהודי רבי חיים After these things, King Ahasuerus elevated Haman son of Hamadatta, the Yagagite, <coughs> and raised him up and seated him higher than all the ministers who were with him. And all the king's servants who were the king's gate would kneel and bow down to Haman, for thus had the king charged concerning him. But Mordechai would not kneel and would not bow, and the king's servants who were in the king's gates said to Mordechai, Why do you flout the king's command? And it happened as they said this to him day after day, and uh, he did not heed them. They told it to Haman, to see whether Mordechai's words would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. And Haman saw that Mordechai would not kneel and would not bow to him, and Haman brimmed with wrath. But he scorned to lay hands on Mordechai alone, for they had told him who Mordechai's people were. And Haman sought to destroy all the Jews, Mordechai's people, who were all in Ahasuerus' kingdom. In the first month, which is the month of Nisan, coming up, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus' reign, he cast a poor, which is a lot, for every day in the month and every month of the twelve, and it fell on the last month of Adar. 
And Haman said to Mordechai, said to Ahasuerus, there is a people scattered and separate from all peoples in the provinces of your king, kingdom. And their rules are different from every other people's. And they do not observe the king's rules. And they do not pay for the king to leave them in peace. If it please the king, let it be written to wipe them out. And uh, 10,000 talents of salve, silver will I measure out to the court overseers to bring the kings to the king's treasury. And the king removed his ring from his hand and gave it to Haman. The silver is yours and the people's to do with it as, you, as is good in your eyes. And the king's scribes were called together in the first month of the 13th day. And it was written as all that Haman had charged to the king's satraps. And the governors in every single province, according to their mode of writing, and the ministers, every single people, every single province, according to their language, in the name of Ahasuerus, it was written, and it was sealed with the king's ring. And the missives were sent out by the hand of the couriers to all the king's providence, provinces to destroy, to kill, and to wipe out all the Jews, from young lads to old men, babes, and women, in a single day on the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar, and to take their spoils. A copy of the writing to be given as a rule in every province, uh, manifested to all peoples, to be ready for this day. The couriers went out, rushed to the king's word, and the rule was given out in Shushan, the capital. And the king and Haman sat down to eat and drink. And there was commotion in the city. my gosh that is the worst thing i've heard since i got the news that i wasn't made head cheerleader or that i was being replaced as juliet in the school play or that doug simpson the quarterback broke our date i know imagine those bullies sitting down to have dinner i mean it's not like they went on vacation to a warm resort during an unprecedented ice storm or ate at a super fancy restaurant with too many people not wearing masks, but you'd think that they would know better. Maybe one of them was a middle child who was always in his older sibling's shadow. Greg! Greg! Unmute, Greg! <laughs> Greg! <laughs> He spent all that time fixing his hair. There you go. Thank you for letting me in. And wow, it was not groovy at all that the king gave all that silver to the bad guys. Think of how many engraved platters we could have bought with that. What's got me is that the new queen couldn't tell anyone who she really was. You know, the first queen was authentic and she spoke truth to power. This one, Esther, seems kind of messed up. But you got to admit, Esther's got something special going on. Mm. Oh, yeah. Esther would for sure have been accepted by the boosters, no doubt. They're the most popular girls in school. 
Oh, I'm tired of hearing about it already. That's all anybody ever talks about. Esther, Esther, Esther. Indeed. <laughs> Gosh, Jan, you really need to work on anger management issues. Can daddy keep telling the story? What happened next? I haven't been this worried since mommy got Larry Jitus. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. Well, you can all imagine there was quite an uproar in all the town and even all across the land. First, we take a short commercial break and then we'll pick up chapter four. That's a great idea, Daddy. I need time to go and get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich anyway. Not a hum and tuff. <laughs> Mordechai mourned, he put on sackcloth and ash. The Sabbath, I hear, I is a Makan Masher Varam Melerta, Tomagia, Ever Gado, all the Yudim, the Tsam Vakumis Fahad, Sahakaefe, Yatsal Rabim, Atovahana, Narotes, Sarisa, Havia Gidulaha, the Hitchalachal Hamal Kameag. Additionally, the Gadim, the Halabi, he shed Mordechai, the Hastia Sakome, Allah, the Loki Bell, the Tikrah Stair, and then Esther called and she summoned the Chamberlains 
and ordered him to go to Mordechai to ask what was this all about, why he was so bereft and beset. So Chatach went out to Mordechai, which was in front of the gate, and then Mordechai told him of all that had happened and all the money that Haman had promised to pay to the royal treasuries, the annihilation of the Jews, and also gave him a copy of the text of the decree that was distributed in Shushan for their destruction, so he could show it to Esther and inform her and bid her go to the king to implore of him and to plead with him for her people. And so she came and told Esther what Mordechai had said. And Esther told Chatach and said, tell Mordechai, all the king's servants, know that anyone who approaches the king in the inner court who is not summoned, it is one law, they will be put to death, except the one for whom the king will extend the great royal saber and scepter that they may live. And I haven't been summoned to the king even for the past 30 days. And so they told this to Mordechai. And Mordechai said, tell Esther, don't imagine that you will escape in the king's palace, that you will be any different from the rest of the Jews. But if you persist in keeping silent, then relief and deliverance will come from another place, while you and your father's house will perish. And who knows, maybe it was just for this that you became a queen. And Esther said, go assemble all the Jews that are to be found in Shushan. Fast for me, do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. And I, with all my young women, we will fast also and come to the king, even though it's not lawful. And if I perish, I perish. And then... Mordechai left Ava Mordechai Esther. And he did exactly as Esther commanded. So one of the dreads of Purim is that as soon as Purim is over, I got a special tie. This is a clue. What comes four weeks after Purim? Pesach, start cleaning. So let me ask a Pesach quiz. I love when I came to America, I got to know the great things. Wait, wait, don't tell me. My friend Rabbi Scheinberg in New Jersey has a take on it. I'm going to tell you three very rapid Pesach scenarios, a little different. Two of them are true. One of them is false. Listen up carefully and we don't have a poll mechanism, but in a moment, once we've, uh, once you've heard these three, I'll go through and like put a hand up or applaud for the ones one you think is true. Number one, you probably know you're not allowed to eat bread. You're not even allowed to have an infinitesimal amount of chametz, even the even a molecule. Where does the water in Jerusalem come from? It comes in pipes from the Kinneret. What's the major industry of the Kinneret? Fishing. What do they use for bait for the fish? They use breadcrumbs. And that means the rabbis one year in Jerusalem, they decided that all the water in Jerusalem was chametz. And that year, all of the Haredim only drank bottled water. And every year since then, two days before Pesach, the municipality of Jerusalem pipes water uphill from Tel Aviv and from elsewhere to avoid the taint of bread breadcrumbs. Story number one. Story number two, selling chametz. So the, the chief rabbi in Jerusalem doesn't trust anyone. And so the local rabbis buy chametz from people in their town and they sell it to the region. They all sell it to the chief rabbi of Israel. And he for many years had a neighbor, an Arab family in the old city who would own all the chametz in the land of Israel from all the Jews. And one year, they were schmoozing, they were friends, and the chief rabbi, Garan, asked this uh, elderly member of the Arab community, why is it that you love doing this with me so much? And this elderly Arab said, because I remember when I was young, my, grand, my mother's mother, my grandmother, would do a ritual like this. And then Rabbi Goran had a moment of horror and realized that for the last many years, 
he had been selling all of the chametz on the land of Israel to another Jew. Story number two. Story number three. There is always a new Haggadah every year, at least one. And a few years ago, they brought out a new American Haggadah with an illustration from the Marx Brothers and a uh, piece from Woody Allen and Jerry Seinfeld telling the story of the Haggadah, all the kind of bad kids of Jewish life. And it was a bestseller. So quick, quick, uh, just wave your hands. Who thinks the story about the water in Jerusalem and the breadcrumbs and the canaries? True or false? Put your hand up if you think it's true. Okay, and thumbs down if you think it's false. Okay, the story about selling the chief rabbi Garan, selling all the chametz to another Jew, true or false? Giving that one the thumbs down. And the story about the bad kids Haggadah being the best seller of all time, true or false? God, very, very diverse group. It's always good to see. That's that's that that's the uh, odd one out. The Haggadah is not true. Jerry Seinfeld never wrote a piece for Haggadah. I was in Israel the year that the Rabbanut came out with that ruling, and nobody drank tap water among the Haredim in Jerusalem. And if you read the archives of the Jewish Jerusalem Post, it did indeed happen to Chief Rabbi Garan. So Pesach is coming, everybody. And now, chapter five. Vayehi vayam ashlishi vatil bash ester malchut vatamod vachatzar beit hamelech apnimit nochach beit hamelech vehamelech yosheh al kisi malchut ob beit hamalchut nochach petach habayit vayehi chirot hamelech et ester malka omedet bechatzer nazachein beina vayoshet hamelech Esther et sharvit azahav asher biyado vatikra vester vatiga berosh sharvit vayomer lah melech malach Esther malka uma bakashatech at chazi amalchut vayinatenach atomer Esther imal melech tov yavo hamelech vehaman hayom el amishte asher asiti lo. <laughs> I love this part. <laughs> then the king said to her, what do you wish, Queen Esther, and what is your request? It shall be given to you, even half the kingdom. And Esther answered, if it seem good to the king, let the king and me Come on, <laughs> come to the banquet that I have prepared. The king said, make Haman <laughs> hurry, that he may do as Esther has said. That's right, I was invited to the most elite party of all elite parties. Haman, it's me, went out that day joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordechai in the king's gate that he did not stand or bow to him, he was full of indignation against Mordechai. Haman's wife, my beloved Zeresh, and all of his friends said to him, let us stake be made 50 cubits high, and tomorrow speak to the king that Mordechai may be impaled on it. <laughs> and then you, that is me, Haman, can go cheerfully into the king to the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman, <laughs> and he had the steak made. Now, <laughs> while I have you here, <clears throat> I thought I would teach you some songs about this baby, my three-cornered hat. So um, I'm going to put the. Oh. 
Haman, you're muted. No way. <laughs> Did you not hear any of that at all? We just need the words for the song, everything else we heard. <laughs> okay, that's, I must have been accidentally muted there. All right, the words for the Hebrew is are in the chat. I don't have the other words, but you'll catch on. And in fact, the words won't last very long because we're gonna take them away bit by bit. And if you make a mistake, you can take your libation and have a little bit of it if you make a mistake, but don't make deliberate mistakes. All right, so here we go. There are motions to do, and we'll be jumbotroning you, so beware. My hat. It has three corners. Three corners has my hat. All right, let's sing it. You can sing along with me. My hat, it has three corners, three corners as my hat. And if it hadn't three corners, it would not be my hat. Bump, bump, let's take a word away, let's take away the my. Mm, hat, it has three corners, three corners as hat and if it hadn't three corners it would not be hat ooh, ooh. all right let's take away my let's take away hat let's even take away three because we don't want this to go on too long all right mm -mm. it has mm, corners mm, corners has mm -mm. And if it had an mm corners, it would not be mm -mm. Uh, uh, All right, you're doing pretty well. Let's try no extra words and see if we can catch anybody. <clears throat> mm -mm. It has mm mm mm. Mm mm has mm mm. And if it had an mm mm mm. It would not be <clears throat> bum bum. Okay, now I challenge you to go back and look through that chat and find those Hebrew words because we are going to use them. Same motions, different tune. Are you ready? Okay. La kova shali shalosh pino shalosh pino la kova shali lule hayu lo shalosh pinot lo hayaze la kova shali oh oh all right let's take some words away let's take away uh oh and uh but we'll keep the shalosh pino uh 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 Shalosh pino, shalosh pino, lule hayulo, shalosh pino, lo hayazela. Okay, last time, let's take away all those extra words. Ready? Are you ready? I don't see anyone reacting. Are you ready? Oh, okay, okay, you're ready. All right, I see some reaction. There you go. Okay, and here we are. Uh 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 Lachaim, 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 lachaim. And now I think we're ready for chapter six. Alayla hawu nadetash nat hamelech. Vayomelehavi et sefer azichronot divre hayamim. Vayu nikraim lifne hamelech, vayimatze hatuv asher, ki gid mordechai, al bitana vateresh, shnees rise hamelech, 
בשומרי הסף אשר ביקשו לשלוח יד במלך אחשוורוש ויאמר המלך מה נעשה יקר וגדולה למרדכי על זה ויאמרו נערי המלך משרתיו לא נעשה עמו דבר ויאמר המלך מי בחצר והמן בא לחצר בית המלך הכי צונה למול המלך לתלות את מרדכי על עץ אשר הכין לו That night, Fleet deserted the king and he ordered the book of records to the annals to be brought and it was read to the king. There it was found written that Mordecai had denounced Brikthana and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs who guarded the threshold, who had plotted to do away with King Ahasuerus. What honor or advancement has been conferred on Mordecai for this? The king inquired. Nothing at all has been done for him, replied the king's servants who were in attendance on him. Who is in the court, the king asked, for Haman had just entered the outer court of the royal palace to speak to the king about having Mordecai impaled on the stake he had prepared for him. It is Haman standing in the court, the king's servants answered him. Let him enter, said the king. Haman entered, and the king asked him, what should be done for a man who the king desires to honor? Haman said to himself, who would the king desire to honor more than me? So Haman said to the king, for the man whom the king desires to honor, let royal garb at which the king has worn be brought, and a horse on which the king has ridden and on whose head a royal diadem has been set. And let the attire and the horse be put in charge of one of the king's noble courtiers. And let the man whom the king desires to honor be attired and paraded on the horse through the city square while they proclaim before him This is what is done for the man whom the king desires to honor. Quick then, said the king to Haman, get the garb and the horse, as you have said, and do this to Mordecai, the Jew, who sits in the king's gate. Omit nothing of all you have proposed. So Haman took the garb and the horse and arrayed Mordecai and paraded him through the city square. And he proclaimed before him, this is what is done for the man who the king desires to honor. Then Mordechai returned to the king's gate while Haman hurried home in head covered in mourning. There Haman told his wife Zeresh that all his friends, everything that had befallen him. His advisors and his wife Zeresh said to him, if Mordechai before whom you have begun to fall is of Jewish thought, you will not overcome him. You will fall before him to your ruin. While they were still speaking with him, the king's eunuchs arrived and hurriedly brought Haman to the banquet, which Esther had prepared. Oh, Sam, where's my Sam? Sam! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I told you, technology these days, it's really complicated. I just love that music. It makes me want to cha-cha. You know what I mean, Sam? Yes. Yes, oh, Alice, I know. Oh, Sam, you got to take me dancing. I mean, come on. I've been just doing dishes all day. That poor queen lost her nerve right when she was about to pop the question. Uh-huh. I sure hope she gets her gumption up in the next chapter. I mean, Sam... It's never too late to have a happy ending, you know what I mean? Well, gee, Alice, I don't know if I can stick around for the rest of the story. I mean, it's bowling night. Bowling night? I want to see some booze in the chat for that bowling night. You mean you'd rather spend your evening wearing funny shoes, thank you, and throwing strikes and spares Then find out what happened to Queen Esther and her cousin Mordecai? Gosh, I'm sorry, Alice. 
I promised the guys. Look, Sam the Chocolate Man, if your bowling night is more important than I am, the only strike you're going to have is striking out with me. <laughs> and there'll be no sparing you. <laughs> Just like I'm so worried that dastardly Heyman <gasps> and foolish King Ahasuerus aren't going to spare Esther's people. Boo on you, Sam. I'm going to listen to the story. Go on, Mr. and Mrs. Brady. Thank you, Alice. That's telling Sam. Thank you, even Sam. We'll need to have, we are going to have a real man-to-man -man talk about this later. But on to chapter seven. Yavo Hamelech Vahaman Lishtahati Mester Hamalka Vayam Hamelech Leaster Gam Vayam Asheni Vamishayayin Masharatech Esther Hamalka Upatinaten Lach Umabash Akashatech Ad Hatsimal Kud Vatahas, Vatan Mester Hamalka, Vatan Ber, Imad Sadi Hemenech Rabein Mecha, Hamelech, Dima Melech Tab, Dinatan Linach Sheep, Shalati, just let me have my life, my soul, Vami Bavakashati, Idim Karnu. Aniriami, Ashmid la Rahog, Ulaha bed, Vilula Vadim, Vishvachot, Nim Karnu, Echarashti, Kien Hatze Shave, the Nezakam If it was only our life, livelihood, I wouldn't have bothered the king, only because it is our life. Rabbi, am I supposed to do it now? Yes, please. And King Ahasuerus said, and he said to Queen Esther, who is this and where is he who dared do this? And Esther said, an adversary and an enemy, this evil Haman. And Haman became terrified before the king and the queen. And the king arose in his fury from the wine feast to the orchard garden. And Haman stood to beg for his life of Queen Esther for he saw that evil was determined against him by the king. Then the king returned from the orchard garden to the house of wine feast, and Haman was falling on the couch upon which Esther was. And the king said, Will you even force the queen with me in the house? The word came out of the king's mouth, and they covered Haman's face. And then Harbona, the Chan Chamberlain, said, You know, those gallows they, that Haman had made for Mordechai, and Mordechai spoke so well for the king, those gallows are still there in the house of Haman, 50 cubits high. And the king said, Hang him on it. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordechai. And the anger of the king, the Hamad Hamelech, Shahavah, it calmed down. So ju just uh, let me share with you a tiny piece in the spirit of Purim has been going around a piece of music that's got a Jewish connection and a connection to civil disobedience and to a sense of freedom in all lands. So let me share with you one verse. You can find uh, the rest of it easily. And then one clue about the Jewish connection of this. In a land of Ryan, 
Das Land ist dein Land, das Land ist mein Land, von Kalifornien bis Ellis Island, von die Größe Osres bis die Breite Jamen. Das ist ein Land von mir und dir. Ich gehe ja rüber, die Berg und Terre, Aaron Geringo. Das ist ein Land von mir und dir. Sehr So one, one of the Jewish connections. So Woody Guthrie had a Jewish wife who was a Yiddishist. He wrote uh, songs, especially one from Hanukkah. Most of all, this Jewish couple, Woody, uh, sorry, Woody Guthrie, he had a Jewish son, Arlo. Who was Arlo Guthrie's bar mitzvah tutor? If you know, write it in the chat. Arlo Guthrie's bar mitzvah tutor, strange story, truly, truly was. Rabbi Meir Kahani, and wow, such, such, <laughs> Google it. It's really, really true, and uh, there are such strange confluences. Who knows what causes what? But so great to see uh, that's, that that song brought home on Purim. Moving along. Chapter eight. ביום ההוא נתן המלך אחשוורוש לאסתר המלכה את בית המן צורר היהודים ומרדכי בא לפני המלך כי הגידה אסתר מהולך ויעשר המלך את טבעתו אשר העביר מהמן ויתנה למרדכי Vatasemester <laughs> את שרביט הזהב, ותקום אסתר ותעמוד לפני המלך. אסתר ביסיצ'ט את הקינג להוות המנס איבל פלאט. היא הקסנדה את הגולדן ספטר להם, והיא הרוזה ונשאו בפניהם. היא אמרה, אם אני אהב את הפעם שלך, נתן לדברים להיות בתחילת הלאנד. the provinces to reverse Haman's horrible decree. <clears throat> so, letters were sent out to all the land in every language posted everywhere. And Mordechai left the king's presence in the royal robes of blue and white with a magnificent crown of gold and a mantle of fine linen and purple wool. And the city of Shushan rang with joyous cries as the Jews en enjoyed light and gladness, happiness, and honor. And there's a song that goes with that. If you know it, you can sing with me. La Yehudim hai ta'ora v'simcha v'sason La Yehudim hai ta'ora v'simcha v'sason v'ita. Hem t'ye lanu, t'ye lanu, t'ye lanu. 
now I'm going to invite my, my uh, dear friend, Alec, to offer some food, Purim food trivia. Well, as you know, Cindy, I am an expert in all foods of large portions. I know how to make a meatloaf, a meat stew, a beef pot roast, basically anything with meat in it. But today we're going to talk about Purim foods. So I want everybody to get your chat fingers ready because you are going to take a groovy Purim food quiz. Are you ready? All right. So we're going to see if we know a little bit about ancient Persian food. All right. So here we go. You're going to have four options. You can put one, two, three, or four in the chat. And then I will, <laughs> someone's already answered. I haven't even asked anything yet. All right. According to tradition, when Esther was living in the king's palace, she ate only one, chicken, two, vegetarian food, three, oatmeal, or four, hamantashen. So I'll repeat those answers again. This is Esther. This is all she ate when she was in the palace. One, chicken, two, vegetarian food, three, oatmeal, and four, hamantashen. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Canadlich. Okay. Well, oh, all right. Well, it looks like we had some random answers, but number two is the correct answer. She was a righteous vegetarian. Okay. Unlike the Brady's who eat only red meat and iceberg salad. All right. Number, this is the next question. It's a chickpea question and I love chickpeas. All right. Chickpeas are a Purim food because one, Esther seduced Ahasuerus with her hummus. Two, Esther ate peas and beans in the harem. Three, Mordechai was a chickpea merchant. Or four, the Jews of Shushan celebrated Haman's death with fried chickpeas. All right, so we got Esther seducing with hummus. Two, Esther ate peas and beans in the harem. Three, Mordecai was a chickpea merchant. And four, the Jews of Shushan celebrated Haman's death with fried chickpeas. So let's see, how are we doing here? All right, we have a few. All right, number, Kanadlich again. Okay, well, number two. Oh, lots of people voted for number four, the Jews of Shushan eating fried chickpeas. But actually the answer is number two, Esther ate peas and beans in the harem. Nice job. Next question. Which of the following is a traditional Purim food? Number one, hamantashen. Number two, latkes. Number three, matzah. And number four, Blintzes. And if you don't get this, you need to get off this Zoom call right now, okay? That's right. Number one, Hamantaschen. I want to see some Hamantaschen filling flavors in the chat there. You tell me what you like in your Hamantaschen. I usually put some ground beef and iceberg lettuce in ours. I mean, that's really what the Brady kids like. Okay, so next. On Purim, it is customary to drink... I mean, the answer is yes, but there are options here. Okay, first, milk, two, orange juice, three, grape juice, and four, alcohol. Now, you know, I, I'm, I'm a teetotaler myself. I have too many things to do around the house. Ah, oh, that's right. Number four, number four. I hope everybody's been drinking. And if you haven't, you, you got some time to go get a drink because this obviously isn't very important information I'm giving you right here. Okay, so here we go. Our last question. Which of the following is, <laughs> Slivovich, ooh. Which of the following is not a traditional Purim food, okay? One, meat kreplach. Two, apple cake. Three, fasouye bechorada. And four, savory hamantaschen. That's the one with the ground beef and iceberg lettuce in it, okay? So let's see. Meat kreplach, apple cake, fasouye bechorada, and savory hamantaschen. This is a tricky one. Let's see. Let's see what you got. Oh boy, I think we're all over the map here with these answers, but the answer is 
apple cake and for extra credit can you put in the chat what holiday we do eat apple cake on i'd like to see you try to answer that one beautiful job everybody now i hope you please clean up after yourselves don't play ball in the house don't break any rosh hashanah that's right that's right oh y'all are just warming my heart we are moving on now to chapter <gasps> chapter nine you better get a drink for this one because chapter nine it's a rough one and as the story comes to its conclusion, almost, there was chaos and violence and bloodshed in the land. Mordechai's fame was spreading widely, and the Jews struck their enemies with the stroke of a sword. They treated their enemies as they pleased and learned a lot of lessons in the process. In Shushan, the capital, the Jews slew and annihilated 500 men, including... The sons of Haman, the son of Hamadatta, the Jews' enemy, but they did not take the spoils. And that same day, the number of those in Shushan, the capital, who were killed, they were, that was reported to the king. Queen Esther asked for another day for the Jews to continue trying to take care of business. Even if all these years later, it's hard for us to read the story, there's a lot we can learn from it. As this story got told over the ages, the numbers got bigger and bigger and wilder and crazier until it was really like a very giant fish story. But at the same time, we tell the story because in the end, we learn that Queen Esther and Mordechai sent out words of a ceasefire. They said, enough is enough already. They sent out words of peace and truth to establish these days of Purim, that they would be days of feasting and merrymaking, not hurting anyone else. They would be feasting and merrymaking and giving gifts to one another, and of course, to the poor. Esther's ordinance confirmed these regulations for Purim. It was recorded in the book for all posterity and for all time. Chapter 10. Ayasem Hamelech Hashverosh Mas Al Haaret Vie Hayam Bechol Mase Tokpo Ugvurato Ufarashat Grulat Mordechai Asher Gidlo Hamelech Haloheim Kituvim Al Sefe Divre Hayamim Lemalche Madai Ufaras Ki Mordechai ha-Yehudi, Mishne la-Melech ha-Hashverosh, Vegadol la-Yehudim, Veratzu il-Rovechav, Doresh tov le-Amo, Vedover shalom, Lechol zaro, La-Yehudim, Ha-Yetara v-Simcha, Ok, 
King Ahasuerus imposed tribute on the mainland and in the islands. All his mighty and powerful acts and a full account of the greatness to which the king advanced Mordechai are recorded in the annals of the kings of Medea and Persia. For Mordechai the Jew ranked next to King Ahasuerus and was highly regarded by the Jews and popular with the multitude of his brethren. He sought the good of his people and interceded for the welfare of all his kindred. Well, 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 kids. Now we hope that you have all learned something. We sure have, Dad. Yeah, we sure have. For one thing, you've got to always be proud of who you are. And take responsibility for your actions. And learn how to spotlight yourself when it's your turn. <laughs> you can't hide behind your Zoom screen and pretend you're someone else. Even if you wear a crown or a really bad wig, you're still you inside. Speaking of bad wigs, well, anyway, I learned that you can't always worry about being popular. You have to do what's right. You said it, Marsha. High five. Oh, my nose. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, Marsha. I'm sure by Saturday night, it'll be totally resolved. Just like our other 23 minute episodes. And kind of like the Megilla, if you don't think too much about chapter nine. That's right, sweetheart. And remember, kids, in the end, bullies always lose, even when they think they've won and won't admit it and keep trying to make a whole lot of other people believe differently. You said it, Mrs. Brady. Sam even agrees. Right, Sam? Uh, you bet, Alice. Oh. I still wanted to go bowling. <laughs> <laughs> So, Mike, so Bobby, would you, Bobby, would you finish us up? You, you have to unmute first, darling. Sure, Mom. Always obedient. <laughs> Such a nice boy. <laughs> ah. Please join me if you like for the closing blessing. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Harav et riveinu vehadhan et idineinu vehanokem et nikmatenu veham shalem gemu lechol oivei nafshenu vanifra lanu mikol tsarenu Baruch atah Adonai hanifra lemo Yisrael mikol tsarem ha'el hamoshiach Amen. 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 They're always closing credits. Here they come. But first, we might have a rerun because yes. it's the Brady Bunch after all. Shall we, we have a rerun? <laughs> I think we should have a rerun of that one song. We're trying. Ama <laughs> Amazingly. The folks at the network heard your pleas and have answered them. I love how interactive Zoom is. It's amazing.
Cause on Purim we love to celebrate 